<laughs> All right, well, I have that it's 12.20, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. Uh, my name is Brian Dalkiz. I've been teaching math at Spoon River College since the spring of 98, so I've been here since the 1900s. <laughs> yeah. uh, the college theme for this year is make good trouble, break the bad stuff, or you could more simply think of bad stuff simply as just BS. Uh, uh, <laughs> The title of my college theme presentation is No More BS. <laughs> there have been a number of good presentations this year, and they're a tough act to follow, but I've taken a close look at all of them and think I've figured out the recipe for a good presentation. You need to have a catchy title, so no more BS. Hopefully that's catchy. Uh, include interesting or hot button topics. State historical facts and or quotes. Use metaphors, poetry, and or bingo cards. Uh, use humor. This may include tasteful cursing, which I plan to use today. <laughs> Insult math. <laughs> to help with that, cross that shit off. <laughs> Tell a personal story that challenges yourself not to cry. <laughs> uh, include video clips. It's something I always like to do. So there will be some video clips, and hopefully the technology cooperates with that. Um, <clears throat> this is something I like to share with my students. Just a blank square, blank white square. Um, in an ideal world, students would begin in my classes with a strong understanding of the prerequisite material. Uh, represented by these Jenga blocks here. This stack of Jenga blocks represents a nice, complete, stable foundation upon which they can build new concepts and skills. However, we don't live in an ideal world, and students often come in with foundations maybe more like this, with some gaps in their foundation. These gaps represent the unknown or forgotten knowledge and skills. Um, we can still work with this, just fill in the gaps, You know, maybe take a little bit of extra time to go back over some of the background material. Uh, but when students come in with a background like this, <laughs> you have a collapsing foundation. Not only do these students have a lot of unknown or forgotten knowledge, they are loaded with misinformation, misconceptions, misunderstandings, BS, uh, and bad habits. This is where you're better off just knocking the whole thing down and trying to build it back up. Uh, another comparison I like to use involves Scrabble tiles. Uh, whenever we're exposed to new information, before we've had time to think about it, process it, analyze it, interpret it, it's essentially just raw data. We're just exposed to something. This exercise illustrates the introduction to raw data. Once I bring up the image, you're going to see a scattering of Scrabble tiles for five seconds. I want you to try to remember as much as you can from this image. The students from my classes have seen this before, so shut it. <laughs> Remain silent. Okay, five seconds, starting now. All right, yeah, I know it might be a little small from back here, too. But, um, so you saw it for five seconds. How much do you remember? How many tiles were there? Anybody know? It How was many? square. <laughs> How many A's were there? Was there an A in there? A C? A T? A Z? A Q? A P? How well do you think you'd be able to reproduce what you just saw? Just like any new information you haven't had the time to process, you don't know much about it, and are not in a legitimate position to draw any conclusions or form any opinions. So let's try it again. Uh, this time, the tiles will be more organized. So as we're beginning to make sense of new information, we look for patterns, we look for meaning, we try to make sense of it, we try to understand. Uh, this exercise illustrates the process, the, the processing of this information. Once again, you're going to see the Scrabble tiles for five seconds, and I want you to try to remember as much as you can from the image. This time, however, they're going to be organized into an array. Uh, again, students of mine have seen this before, so silence, please. Here you go, five seconds. So same questions, how much do you remember? How many tiles were there? Three. Be careful, they're the 
We're actually 28. Three rows of, of six and two rows of five. How many A's, C's, T's? You might remember more of the letters now when you lay it out like this. Uh, once you've had time to organize your thoughts and think about something a little bit more, it becomes easier to remember. Uh, and you may begin to think you've got it figured out. But, but it's important at this point to recognize that your knowledge is limited. Taking plenty of time to ensure you've considered many possibilities and viewpoints is essential to understanding. This is often the apex of uh, the students get to in math. They memorize formulas and rules without understanding why they're true. Uh, formulas and rules appear as random symbols with no meaning, kind of like what you're seeing with the Scrabble tiles. So students will struggle to apply them and also quickly forget them. It's much like jumping to conclusions or opinions with minimal to no evidence and very little thought. This can be really problematic if a person is overly confident in their conclusions, not open to any other ideas or opinions, digs into their trenches and proceeds to spend more time defending their position than they spent thinking to arrive at their conclusion. Um, and another phrase I've seen before is, my ignorance is as good as your knowledge. There's some more big fat BS right there. The idea that ignorance is as good as knowledge is complete BS. So let's do it again one more time. This time you're going to get it. Once you have put in the time and effort to think about an issue, ponder the possibilities, consider different points of view, uh, you will have formed a much stronger foundation to be able to understand. This exercise illustrates the epiphany, the aha moment. Finding meaning from the symbols, you reach understanding. So here we go, five seconds. Seeing that, five seconds seems even longer because you get it really quick. It makes sense. Can you remember now? What did it say? Understand rather than memorize. The symbols now have meaning. You're no longer seeing random letters in an image. The letters now represent an idea. There is meaning behind them. Too many students never get to this stage in math. Many of them give up before reaching this point where they actually understand. I almost did that when I was a freshman in high school, but thankfully my mom helped me see the light help me understand there was logic behind these seemingly random symbols, and then one aha moment followed another, and I was able to build my Jenga tower. Education is the process of learning, simply put. We all have our own unique window into the world, uh, and we all have to navigate the ups and downs of our own individual human experience. Uh, we learn from our experience, and this is education. Schools and colleges provide a more formal framework to ensure we're all well-equipped and prepared to be productive members of society. Education is essential to the health of our country, our freedoms, and our democracy. Thomas Jefferson was well aware of this, um, one of the founding fathers of our country, when he said, an enlightened citizenry is indispensable for the proper functioning of a republic. Self-government is not possible unless the citizens are educated sufficiently to enable them to exercise oversight. It is therefore imperative that the nation see to it that a suitable education be provided for all its citizens. In spite of its importance, education is often frowned on by those who perhaps haven't made it past the second level of the Scrabble tiles, or have built their beliefs on collapsing Jenga blocks. You ain't welcome here no more, smart boy. Hmm. I'm detecting a distinct strain of anti-intellectualism in this territory. <laughs> Power off, Einstein. Is there no place for the man with the 105 IQ? <laughs> Formal education is currently facing uphill battles on many fronts with book banning, critical race theory, wokeness, don't say gay laws, government imposed restrictions to curriculum, and so on. The War on Ignorance. Richard Echeza is a former business instructor at Spoon River College. Uh, he would often ask me if we're winning the war on ignorance, kind of jokingly, are you, how are the battles against ignorance going, Brian? Um, and we just, I just took it jokingly at the time, but with all the misinformation and disinformation campaigns going on right now, it's not a joke anymore, if it ever was. Uh, education is the key to the war on ignorance. Taking the time to think, process, analyze, understand, recognizing what you don't know 
knowing how to learn more, how to research, how to recognize invalid reasoning and fact versus fiction, knowing BS when you see it. No, the Earth is not flat. Yes, the Holocaust did happen. No, students are not using litter boxes in schools. No, the COVID vaccine does not cause extra testicles. No, slavery was not an internship program. Yes, climate change is real. And no, the election was not stolen. If I'm the one that has to do the law. Well, I'd say so for in this clip, Frank had just finished explaining to Deborah that because a suitcase was filled with laundry, it was her duty as a woman to carry it up the stairs. He said, that's the way it's supposed to be. Here's her response. Uh -oh, if I'm the one that has to do the laundry, why should I be the one to drag that thing upstairs, huh? Isn't the man supposed to carry stuff? Isn't that the man you think to do? <laughs> Obviously, you spent a lot more time thinking about this than I have. <laughs> At least he recognized that fact. <laughs> it is important to recognize and appreciate the fact that no matter how much you think you know about a subject, there are likely aspects you have not yet considered. Be open-minded to new information and different viewpoints. Since the overturning of Roe versus Wade, there have been quite a number of laws passed in various states impacting women's reproductive rights. With all the complications that have resulted from many of these laws, how much time and thought do you think went into making them? When I see some of the restrictions in these laws, my thoughts go to a date that has significant meaning to my wife, Sarah, and me. Right, this is where I got to keep it together. Okay. It was on this day that we brought into this world and had to say goodbye to our first two children. It was halfway through the pregnancy and our son was stillborn. Our, our daughter then had to be delivered as well. After which, Sarah nearly died. At the beginning of each day, or at the beginning of the day, we were a future family of four. By the end of the day, we were nearly down to just me. If the doctor had not been able to act quickly with the freedom to make the necessary decisions he made, Sarah would not be here today. Nor would we have gone on to have Elliot or Oliver. I'm sharing this with you to emphasize the importance of taking the time to think things through. Don't rush to decisions without fully considering their consequences. Not everything is black or white. It's not that easy. Controversial topics are controversial not because they're simple, but because they are complex. We must educate ourselves and be mindful of how our decisions affect others. Education is the jelly that inoculates us to the BS. What the hell am I talking about? <laughs> All right. This is from Despicable Me 2, I believe. So... Picture that they're injecting the minion with BS, all right? Injecting them with BS, they go berserk, and then it takes jelly to solve the problem. That's the antidote. When I saw these images, I thought of that movie. These folks were filled, they were injected with BS, they went berserk, and they needed some fucking jelly. All right, so let's see. Have a catchy title. Include interesting <laughs> hot-button topics. State historical facts and quotes. All right, check, check, check. Use metaphors. Bingo. I didn't do bingo cards. Uh, use humor. Hopefully it was humor. Um, personal story. I held it together pretty well. Include video clips. Oh, and there's one other thing. I always have to quote Star Wars, so quote wise Jedi. So... I will leave you with these words of wisdom from Obi-Wan Kenobi and from Yoda. Maybe. Don't give in to hate. That leads to the dark side. Trump is Vader. <laughs> <laughs>
Mind what you have learned, say you again. <laughs> Thank you for coming. Questions? We have five minutes. That was quicker than when I rehearsed it. <laughs> All right. Have a nice day. Hopefully, I gave you something to think about.